Okay, so let's see how much basic math you remember. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you out there um, actually study the math skills necessary to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator during some time in your life. So that could be like, you know, middle school or maybe you went back to school. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to do this problem without a calculator. And this is a multiple choice question. So here is our answers. But let's go to take a look at the question. We have five times eight divided by negative two, or five times eight divided by negative two, all that over two plus negative six. And here is our answer. So A is five thirds, uh, B is negative five, C is five, and D is 20 over three. All right, so again, no calculator. Take your time, but if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go take a look at the problem again. And there is no time limit, so don't feel compelled that you have to rush through this thing. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to uh, write out um, you know, each step. So get a piece of paper and a pencil, just kind of take this thing one step at a time. Uh, don't try to do this in your brain. That's not a good idea. Now, for those of you that are going to say, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just going to get my calculator and uh, I'm going to figure this out. Well, you have to be careful uh, with using a calculator as well because, of course, we want to see if you have the math skills to do this without a calculator. But if you don't enter this thing correctly into your calculator, you can also get the wrong answer. I'll talk about that in this video as well. But let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C. Uh, which, of course, is 5. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a uh, certified professional expert in the area of the order of operations and uh, working with positive and negative numbers. Okay, so outstanding. Now, a lot of you uh, probably said, you know, you missed YouTube Math Man. I was a professional expert in this way back in 19, maybe, oh, nice, that's the one, <laughs> let me write this uh, correctly, maybe like 1977 or 1965 or maybe 1984 or maybe uh, 1998, whatever the case is, you know, many, many years ago. And if you don't practice these math skills, you are going to forget. So definitely don't feel bad if you didn't remember how to do this problem because I'm going to refresh your memory right now. All right, so first things first, we have this lovely uh, math problem. And this problem involves what? Well, it involves obviously numbers, but we have multiplication, we have division, uh, we have addition, and even these negative numbers can be con uh, considered like subtraction. Okay, so this is a, you know, a lot of different kind of moving parts here. Also, we have a fraction. Okay, so we have to uh, think to ourselves, well, what do we do first? What is the correct order to do this problem? So in other words, uh, maybe some of you are like, you know, I like to do this first, uh, 8 divided by uh, negative 2. Well, if you do that first, you know, that's going to, you know, uh, you know kind of yield a final result that might be different than starting here, 5 times 8. Now, in this particular problem, uh, it is possible that you could actually do this problem, or maybe not this uh, particular problem, but you can actually get lucky on some math problems where you take the wrong order and you still get the right answer. So um, you got to be very careful here, but the main kind of uh, idea that I'm trying to talk about is that you have to use the correct order of operations. So things like uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, powers, uh, and the like, this is what we call mathematical operations, and we need that, uh, to know the correct order to do this problem. All right, so in order to uh, uh, know that order, well, we have to know this lovely little acronym right here, PEMDAS, okay? So this is a checklist. Obviously, these letters stand for something, and it's a checklist that goes from left to right. And before I, I uh, explain uh, what these letters stand for, let me give you a little uh, phrase here that you can remember this acronym. Okay, so P-E-M. D-A-S. 
So this is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, now I'm not, I'm not quite sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her lovely little phrase. All right, so PEMDAS, what does this mean? Well, this is the correct order that we have to follow when you have uh, multiple different operations in any math problem. All right, so the first thing is P. This stands for parentheses. So if you see parentheses or these things like brackets or these type of things, uh, kind of squiggly brackets, these are what we call grouping symbols. So if we see any of these in the problem, that's where you start. But uh, here's the, th uh, the deal. If you have uh, parentheses and they have like brackets over here, uh, you might be saying, well, what do we do you know, in this problem? Well, you always start from the innermost parentheses. Now, there's got to be actually something to do in these parentheses. And so, in other words, if there's just a, num a number in there, well, there's nothing to do. So you can kind of, you know, uh, drop the parentheses and continue to work from the inside out. All right, so I'm just quickly going over this. If you need more help with this, uh, you know, order of operations and the like after this video, I'll give you some specific recommendations. But anyways, this is what we do first. We're going to look for parentheses or grouping symbols. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is E, and this stands for exponents. But really, you could think of this as a power. So if you have like 2 to the third power, this uh, number in the top right is called the exponent. So this 3 is the exponent. And this big number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So 2 to the third power. Uh, uh, the 3, again, is exponent. So E stands for exponents, but uh, you're really thinking about powers. All right, now before I explain the rest of this checklist, let me go ahead and just tell you what the letters stand for. So M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, S stands for subtraction. Now, a lot of you might be saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I get this because uh, what we have to do next is all multiplication. Then once all that's done, then we'll move on to uh, all the division. And uh, if you have division or if you have multiplication, and then you just continue on in this order. But that is not the way this works. All right, so this is a... a big source of confusion for a lot of people in math, and uh, quite frankly, I don't think this is stressed uh, uh, well enough. Uh, it's definitely taught in math textbooks, and math teachers obviously teach this, but um, I don't think uh, it's stressed enough, so it's easy to make this mistake, but let me go ahead and explain this right now. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is multiplication or division. It's not M and then D, okay, but we need some sort of acronym here, so you can't have uh, P-E-M-D or P-E-D-M, right, because we just don't know. So multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if we have multiplication and then division from left to right, well, multiplication's on the left, so we're going to do that first. But if we have division, then multiplication, we're going to do uh, division first because that's what comes first from uh, left to right. Okay, so again, you have to look at your problem and you have to ask yourself, do I have multiplication? And do I have division? If you have both, you got to see what comes first from left to right. And addition and subtraction works the same way. All right, so this is a quick review on the order of operations. Now let's go ahead and apply our knowledge. But there is a bit of a twist in this problem. And that is we are dealing with a fraction. Okay, And uh, you might be saying to yourself, well, how do uh, fractions fit into this, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, fractions are technically uh, division, right? So like if you have two-thirds, that's the same thing as two divided by three. But in this particular problem, there's something that, um, and this goes to uh, what I was talking about using a calculator, there's something that we have to consider, and that is when we when you have a problem that uh, involves a fraction with a numerator that has a lot of stuff going on, more than just a number, and a denominator that has like its own separate math problem. Well, you want to think of this as two groups, okay? So here is our problem. So effectively, this is the numerator is its own separate problem, and the denominator is its own separate problem. So what we want to do is simplify this down to one number, this down to one number, and then we'll go ahead and, you know, uh, do the last steps involved in the problem. So, uh, you know, basically, you kind of think of these as two groups, right? So anytime you're dealing with a fraction, you have the numerator as one group and the denominator as another group. Now, there's another way you can kind of uh, look at this, and this goes to using your calculator, right? Now, you can see here I have um, these negative um, uh, values in parentheses. 
when over here, you know, you might be saying to yourself, well, is this really necessary? You know, because this could be confusing because you're like, oh, PEMDAS, uh, I'm going to go to parentheses uh, uh, first, but there's nothing to do in parentheses. So if there's nothing to do, in other words, if there's no math inside the parentheses, it's not like negative two times four. Well, you know, you just kind of skip that part, but it's not, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not uncommon to have negative values in parentheses. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into this. Now that we understand PEMDAS and we know that we're looking at two groups, so we could just basically work these problems simultaneously one step at a time. All right, so here is our PEMDAS, and you're saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, there is no parentheses. There's parentheses, but there's nothing to do. E, is there any powers? Nope, I don't see any powers. Uh, do we have multiplication and division? Indeed, we do. Okay. So remember, we're going to think of the numerator and the denominator as their own separate problem. So we need to consider, is there any multiplication or division in either the numerator or the denominator? And of course, we have multiplication in the numerator. So that's what we have to do first, because multiplication uh, comes before division from left to right. All right, so 5 times 8 is, of course, 40. So now our uh, numerator is 40 divided by negative 2. And down in our denominator, uh, we can kind of skip ahead to addition and subtraction because, again, this is like its own separate problem. So there's no multiplication or division here, but there is addition and subtraction. So 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. All right, so we are almost finished. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and wrap up this problem. But we have one more step to do in the numerator before we can actually uh, consider the entire fraction, and that is 40 divided by negative 2. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So 40 divided by negative 2 is negative 20. So now we have negative 20 divided by negative 4. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So the final answer is a positive 5. Okay, so hopefully you remember how to do this math. And if you don't, don't feel bad. I know a lot of you have been away from math uh, a long time. I'll give you some specific recommendations on how you can relearn this stuff or improve in this. But uh, before we leave this video, if you were entertained or if you were helped in some small degree, consider sub uh, subscribing to my channel. It's a great way to support what I'm trying to do. And what I'm trying to do is reach as many people as possible and help them with mathematics. Now, I want to go back and stress a point that I was talking about uh, earlier in the video about calculators. So if you're going to do this problem in a calculator, here is what you need to do. So anytime you have a sum or a difference in mathematics, like in other words, you're adding or subtracting two things like 2 plus 7 or 2 minus 8, typically you'll see expressions like this um, you know, as part of a fraction. But uh, not always will there be parentheses around sums and differences. Now, you should always get in the habit of doing so because it will really help you out. Uh, well, you know, I can kind of go off on a whole other conversation about this, but just get in the habit of putting uh, parentheses around sums or differences. Now, the numerator, uh, we don't have any sums or differences, but you could put uh, an extra set of parentheses around the numerator, but you definitely need them in the denominator because we are adding. Now, when you go in to type this problem into your calculator, if you don't have parentheses around what's in the denominator, you could get the wrong answer because uh, the calculator is not understanding what you're typing in. So you got to be very careful, again, when it comes to sums or differences, put in those parentheses. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, I would be remiss uh, because I was going to tell you how you can improve in this level of mathematics. All right, so what we're talking about here again is basic math. And uh, if you're interested in relearning basic math with myself, then check out one of uh, three of these courses. I'm going to leave links to them in the description of this video. The first is my Math Foundations course. It's a quick uh, basic math review. It's an excellent way to kind of get back into math and relearn all these wonderful math skills that you once had. But if you want to take it a step further, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. In this course, we do basic math, uh, algebra, geometry, and some uh, even some basic trigonometry, some other things as well. And if you are a math student, 
Uh, this is typically kind of like pre-algebra level math, right? Well, let's just say you definitely need to know this to be in pre-algebra, but uh, I do cover a lot of this in my pre-algebra course. So those are three courses that you can check out if you want to kind of, you know, work on these skills. But anyways, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.